What's going on, everybody? I wanted to give you guys a quick update because I assume if you're on this email list, you're at least somewhat interested in the course and kind of the progress, and I've been getting a lot of questions, so I figured that a quick video would be helpful. Um, so I'm still in development of the course. I've got everything pretty much mapped out. I sent out a survey uh, probably a month ago-ish, something like that, and got a lot of really good responses as far as what people expect to you know, see in the course and what they want to see in the course. So that was very helpful. Um, I have been getting some like common questions um, that maybe I thought I'd take an opportunity to answer and then give an update sort of a timing and then what we're kind of doing behind the scenes. Um, so start with timing. Um, the original plan was to launch the course October 6th. As of right now, I'm skeptically hopeful, if that's a thing, that we can still meet that timeline. If anything, it may push back a little bit into October, uh, but I want to try and keep it somewhat close to that original date. Um, it really comes down to the fact that I severely underestimated how much time this would take for me to put together. And then the more I dive into it, the more details I'm uncovering as far as what I should cover, what I shouldn't cover. I'm putting a ton, a ton of time into this course. So I really want to make it worth it for anyone who chooses to take it. Um, so that's the timeline. I'm probably going to do a more like formal update, like Q&A or like frequently asked questions or like ask me anything, whatever you want to call it, video on the Print Farm Academy channel. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, as far as frequently asked questions, the first one that I get a lot is how much is the course going to cost? And this is a reasonable question because obviously it's going to cost something, right? The truth is, is I don't have costs completely finalized yet. I have a general idea of kind of what I think I'm going to charge for the the course. Um, so this is probably where I'm going to ask you guys, like what would be a reasonable amount that you'd be wanting to pay for a course like this, given the fact that it's going to have a crap ton of information. I'm also going to include interviews with other successful 3D printing, you know, entrepreneurs. Uh, there's going to be a lot of information jam packed into this thing. It's going to be four to six hours of content. Um, I thought it was going to be four. I thought it was going to be a stretch to get to four, but now I'm seeing that getting to four is going to be pretty easy. Um, I'm also going to do a live stream at the end of each module. So there's four modules. So there's going to be four live streams throughout the course. Um, and then you get access to the community where I'll be hanging out and we can answer questions and do all that. So like, give me your feedback. What is a realistic number that you'd be willing to pay or the value you think that brings? Um, I'd be curious to know if that aligns with kind of what I'm thinking for the course itself. Uh, let's see, other common questions. Is it going to be a like a cohort based where I, uh, you know, essentially open it and close it? The plan is for the first go round. Um, the case is yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically have enrollment for the course be a 30 day period. So it'll open up on a certain day, close 30 days later. And everyone who signed up in that period is in the course. Everyone who did not is not. Um, the reason for this is because I want to use this first go round with the course to be a learning opportunity for both of us. Um, and the risk for the students, you taking the course, um, is lower because you have lifetime access. So if you know we go through the first part of the course or the first cohort, I'll say, we get to the end and we find that there's something that you know everyone is saying that they wish was either expanded on or is completely missing. I'll add that for the next cohort, but because you have already signed up for the course, you have lifetime access, you have access to those updates as well. Um, so if anything, it's gonna be kind of a um, learning opportunity to make sure that this course is like completely dialed for everybody. And then the plan is later to then open it up either for another cohort or just open it up so that you can take it really whenever. I think that's it for now. Um, I do wanna show you something in the print farm though. All right, so something I've been spending a lot of time with is updating the print farm um, to kind of phase out a lot of the Prusa printers that we originally started with. As I've said many times in many videos, Prusa is great. I have nothing wrong with Prusa. It's just that, you know, with the advent and introduction of these guys, um, they just really can't keep up. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly integrating P1Ss in place of all the Prusas. So I'm kind of changing rack heights and see if I can see this a little bit better. Putting P1Ss in place, putting in the new um, spool holder design, which makes it way faster to change out. Um, the trick is though, that in doing that, we're gonna burn through a lot of filament much faster. So 
I have been uh, kind of upping the inventory levels of the filament and we just started actually implementing a system where we take an inventory of filament every couple of days so we truly understand our burn rate um, of our filament. And I think, let me see, we did an inventory yesterday and I've got 201 full three kilogram spools of filament on hand. Um, and at the moment we're kind of reordering once a month, basically. Um, so time will tell. I just thought I'd share that interesting uh, little tidbit. But pretty soon this whole room is gonna be full of P1Ss, which I'll talk more about in videos and things like that on the channel. So just wanted to give you guys a sort of behind the scenes look and uh, until next time, see ya.